Before the cameras were rolling, you mentioned Noah Webster. Yes, I did. He's the reason we don't spell rumors with a U here in the States. One night, I had a fever dream, and I imagined that the letter K could be eliminated from the alphabet. Mm. C and Q could pick up its slack. I think that the letter C could be eliminated from the alphabet, and K and S can cover its slack. You may be right. Maybe it was C. Maybe it wasn't K. I don't know. I don't like K. Okay. I think that was the most golden gold we ever golden. Before we get to the movie... <laughs> I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. Last time on our show, we watched Alice in Wonderland. And you may not know this, but May has a theme. What is that theme, you may ask? I can't tell you. You need to go ask Alice. Oh! <laughs> They made a movie out of this? <laughs> yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> Originally broadcast in 1973, it is a made-for-television movie. GAA stars Jamie Smith Jackson, Ruth Roman, Andy Griffith, and Basement alums William Shatner and Charles Martin Smith. Oh. Based on the novel of the same name by Anonymous, which was purported to be the real-life story of a troubled teenage girl, it was later debunked as a work of fiction, written by therapist and Mormon youth counselor Beatrice Sparks, who went on to write other real-life teen diaries, quote-unquote, about hot-button topics such as Satanism, teenage pregnancy, and AIDS. A couple years ago, I found the book Go Ask Alice in a Book Box, and I'm surprised you don't find it more often. I read, like, the first third of it. I don't know why I stopped. It's a very enjoyable read. Very lascivious. At the same time, so campy, because it's clearly fiction. You never finished it. I never finished it. Well, Craig, I have a gift for you. I think you might like it. I think I know what I'm going to do if I'm bored by the movie. <laughs> I'm going to read the book! <laughs> You want to read us a passage? May 15th. I have to force myself to concentrate in school. I didn't know that death took so much out of people. <laughs> I feel completely drained still. Well, hey, man, why don't you cut class eighth period and sneak on over to the old leather couch where we're going to be smoking some drugs and watching Go Ask Alice. During the eighth period. <laughs> you had eight periods in your school? You didn't have eight periods? No, we had seven. Seven? This motion picture is based on the authentic diary of a 15-year-old American girl. She was a 15-year-old American girl. Alice is shopping for diaries. This is key. The diary. I guess I'm buying you because I feel that at last I have something worthwhile to say. And I'm about to get really wrecked on dope. Hello, William Shatner. I hope you're enjoying your post-Star Trek pre-TJ Hooker slump. She's a teenage girl, all of 15 years old. And she has a lot of the problems that girls her age tend to have. She thinks she's too fat. Just got to keep my weight down so all my new clothes will fit. Oh, I know. Take drugs. <laughs> she doesn't like her clothes. You want me to look like a total misfit? Yes, we want you to look like Glenn Danzig. I never called you a drag. You're the one that's been after me to stop being a drag. I never called you a drag. But by the end of this year, I'd know what a drag was. I would drag from a reefer of marijuana. Is that what it's all about? No, the hokey pokey is what it's all about. The way you've been acting all last term. Is it because Sharon got a boyfriend? She's acting with her mouth way too much. <laughs> It can be a wonderful time, too. Best time of your life. If you're on the right stuff. Well, honey, it's something that we can talk about. We can hey. talk about it now. Did you ever milk a cow? I had a chance one day, but I was Now it's as if we speak different languages. You know, there's well, deeper we'll cuts from the band, <laughs> you know? One pill makes you larger. Is that this is not a cautionary song. This is this song is like do drugs. Yeah. It's great. Congratulations, Alice. Clothes were all wrong. 
Now, students, do you understand everything we've discussed today? Do you understand why Alice is such a lame-o and why her clothes suck? She has no friends. If only she could find a friend. I think I found a friend. Her name is Beth Baum. She always wants to practice kissing. I don't understand it. One day while window shopping downtown. Do you want to look around? Do you want to get whacked out on yellow jackets with me? And there's this girl there named Chris who invites her to a party. The party seems cool. They bring out a tray full of soda pops. Button, button, get the button. Oh, I've heard about this scene. I know about this scene. You see, some of the bottles have been laced with acid. <laughs> she gets the button. This is the way that, you know, we can keep those people who are tripping safe <laughs> by having some of, some of us be not tripping. What's happening? Don't worry, just relax. And try not to tear off your skin no matter how many ants you see or feel on it. <laughs> or in it. Like they're trying to poison me. No. No. They successfully poisoned you. <laughs> she goes to a deep dark place. Her hand gets weird. But then she goes to a happy place. Acid! There were no words adequate to explain it to anyone. She's tripping ovaries. Later on, she's writing in her diary about her drug experience. She was glad that it happened, but she's not going to do it again. It's almost noon. It's, um, it's that boy. That boy, Richie. Is that, is it that boy? It's almost noon. Before we know it, she's a full-blown drug addict. She does everything. Pills, marijuana, uppers, downers. That plus my monthly pregnancy scare make me borrow a lot of mom and dad's tranquilizers. Wait a minute, this is accelerating way too quickly. Yeah, a lot <laughs> happened in the commercial break there. Okay, so I feel like this movie went from this part of the book to this part of the book. You just skipped all this. Well, everyone had read the book by this point. Okay. It's like how you can skip the Tom Bombadil part <laughs> of Fellowship of the Rings. She runs into Beth. Beth has a boyfriend named... Um... His name is Butt. His name is so Butt? I guess we won't be able to see each other. His name is Bud. My hearing might be going. His name is Bud. But? <sighs> but. Alice is having a bunch of her friends over to the house, and they are all bonkers on the bonker puffs. And her family comes in, and they're like, It's your birthday. Have some candles. And they're like, Whoa, man. Candles. And they're laughing at the birthday cake because it's funny. Say, honey, birthday cakes aren't so square. They're round. Alice, make your wish. This year we break up the champagne. Hey, hey, what are you on? What are you on? <laughs> Nothing, Dad! This fellow stops by the house. His name is Joel. He's a scholarly young fellow. So I bring these tests over to you. Good. One of the tests is called the Kobayashi Maru. Perhaps you're familiar with it. That's Alice over there. Don't ask her anything. No, wait. Or should you? I'm sure that's true. What do you know about that scholarship renewal for Richie, um... What do you know about the glue that's supposedly holding this mustache on my face? I don't think it's very good. Uh, Alice returns home to find her mother and father wondering, What's up with all of these pills you have? If it wasn't Richie, where'd you get those pills you had upstairs? I'm sorry, ma'am. The, the mouth know. movements okay, are so just, just very distracting. All we want is to be sure that you aren't experimenting with this stuff or any other drugs. And we want you to get some of the blue ones for us. That's how your mother and I like to freak. We like to freak on blues. We always trusted you, Alice. We call them blue devils. Now her downward spiral is groovy. Where do I start? <laughs> they get on a bus and they leave. How long do you think the two hundred dollars is gonna last us? You are gonna smoke and pop through that money like nobody's business. When you are whacked out on pills and dope, two hundred dollars does not go very far. White Rabbit on solo harmonica. You've never heard such a haunting rendition of the classic song by the Jefferson Airplane. Alice is on the streets of the big city, and she's turning tricks. She's eating out of trash cans. She's in bad shape. She's still keeping her diary, though. She ends up at a homeless shelter at this Catholic church. She's befriended by a friendly priest. You want some coffee? 
Caffeine totally makes me nervous. I can't handle it. Do you have any crank? And he says, is this your diary? Huh? Can I read it? I'm going to read it. I think I want to read it. You read it. I didn't have to read much of it. It was pretty repetitive. Uppers, downers, uppers, downers. Whatever happened to Beth? She seemed nice. Alice has a flashback to when she and Chris stayed with these two sadists who did terrible things to them. We see it for two seconds and it's like all of Twin Peaks in those two seconds. It's time to go home. Alice is back home. Off the stuff. She's going back to school. Oh, she's trouble. She is trouble. The kind of trouble I like. <laughs> but everybody in town knows what she went through. And so she feels even more like a misfit now. Alice wants to hang out with Beth again. Is, is Bud around? For the party. But? <laughs> well, he won't be here till the party. <laughs> Your boyfriend, okay. but? We can't hang out. Your reputation's too bad. Look at the slant on mm. those glasses. Are, are glasses <laughs> built that way? Are they supposed to be to be slanted <laughs> like that? Then she can also use a reflection to see if she's about to be pounced on by a jaguar. <laughs> <laughs> Alice is brought in as an emergency substitute babysitter. Jan was supposed to come and babysit, but she never showed up. And Jan shows up, and Jan is out of her mind. I'm on crazy pills! And she's like, Wah. She wants to just grab that baby. Baby, baby, please let me hold him. <laughs> Jan wants to make him stay up all night. And Jan is driven off. And Alice tells that Jan was on drugs. Jan gets in trouble. And now everyone thinks that Alice is a fink. A fink. And that is the unforgivable sin in drug culture. I'm damn glad my kids aren't like that. Kidding, Daddy? I was worse. I mean, don't you know what it was all about? The hokey pokey! Alice talks to Joel some more. Forget exactly what that's all about. There are other ways you can talk to your parents. You can use a ham radio. It makes it less personal. This kid has resting Bill Murray in Caddyshack face. <laughs> He's such a nice guy. He's so understanding. And he wants to go out on a date with her. Even though he looks to be about 27 or 28 years old. Alice is babysitting the baby. She goes into the, to the fridge and takes out a half-empty bottle of soda and just drinks it. Suddenly, she gets real nervous looking, and she starts screaming. And then she collapses, and then we go to commercial. What happened? Alice is in a hospital bed. She's all beat up. What happened? Well, what happened? happened? All your classmates are saying that you've been dealing drugs. What happened? It's not entirely clear what happened at the Larson's house. Give us a nod. That nodding means something completely different in my line of work. <laughs> my line of work. My career as a dope fiend. Alice got high off of the leftover soda, which someone apparently put drugs in. Probably Jan. But is the baby okay? She didn't hurt the baby, even in the depths of her bad trip. It wasn't Alice's fault. I guess I'm really back. <laughs> Alice is back, baby. And better, better than, than ever. ever. She's at a teenage rap session. And they're talking about how they used to do drugs, but now they love being straight. Seems crazy now that I'm straight. I'm straight. And I want to take his place. And bam, we all got blasted. We got blasted with gamma radiation. We all became hulks. <laughs> <laughs> and Alice is a little cynical about the whole thing. He just told you. He digs being straight. I know what he just told me. Bitch. He's high just talking about getting high, and you're getting high off of his high, and I'm getting high off of your high, and it's one big contact high. We should just do a book club. <laughs> and she goes home. She starts hanging out with Beth again. We meet Beth's boyfriend. Uh, you'll be the first one to try it, bud. Alice. Alice, the wallpaper's talking to me. <laughs> I'm at least 10 years older than you, high school girl. I am a graduate student. I want to take you out on a date. I've been through a lot of stuff. I've done a lot of things with a lot of men, but I was always... Off screen at the time. <laughs> I guess Joel is about the best birthday present any 17-year-old girl named Alice could ask for. But it's nice as he is. We see you. 
I hope I don't know him. Joel drops her off at school, and life is looking good. Alice dies. Our daughter died of an overdose of drugs. No! And so we decided to make her diary public. Because we really wanted to embarrass her. Just out of pure spite. Go ask Alice. I don't want to make light of anyone, any family going through these issues. It, it yeah. would just be a nightmare. I don't want to mock the subject of the film. I just want to mock the execution. Yeah. Is this exploitation? The book is exploitation, and it is a movie version of the book. So, yes, I would say it is. The movie is better than I thought it would be. Me too. Jamie Smith Jackson does quite a good job with what she's given. And I really cared about her. Yeah. Even though the script is not very good. Yes, and that it's based on an entire lie. And the story just takes mammoth leaps. Mm -hmm. And there's just these gigantic narrative gaps in it. I took acid, and now I take everything. <laughs> right, right. But you can do that in a book really easily if it's presented as a diary because... When you keep a diary, you don't write in it every day, necessarily. Yeah. But those narrative gaps don't work in a movie. The diary in the movie itself is more of a prop yeah. than an actual narrative device. What I did like about the movie is that it doesn't try to show the audience what it looks like inside the point of view of someone who's on drugs. It just shows the people on drugs. Which makes it more frightening and more authentic. We've all been in rooms with people who are stoned or whatever, and we're not, and we're like, Gah. It know, doesn't look like it's it, fun. It doesn't look fun, no. When she starts stripping, there's nothing that shows us the lights, you know, the streaks or whatever. Yeah. And for being a TV movie, it's pretty gnarly at times. The scene with the weird couple yeah. is very disturbing. That is succinct storytelling. We get a little bit of, we went to this house, things got crazy, Chris screamed. Now Chris isn't around anymore. Five minutes later, they throw us just a flash of that. I can't believe I'm saying so many good things about this movie. Yeah, I can't believe it either. Because you don't really have anything good to say about the book. You don't have anything to say about TV movies from the 70s in general. No. What makes this movie scary is that it really makes it seem as though every teenager in the world is on drugs. Has a problem. Yeah. You're either doing the drugs or you're not doing the drugs and everyone knows who's on what side and everyone's just eventually going to fall into the trap. And even if you fall into this life, even if you kick the habit, it still doesn't end. How dystopian... This view of teenagerhood is. When I was in seventh grade, we did an educational unit on drugs. Mm -hmm. And I went to a parochial school. I went to a Lutheran school. And they're teaching us all about drugs. They're showing these old film strips and things. The thing that they always talked about was the flashback. <laughs> the LSD flashback. Like, you can take LSD, and it might be great. Mm -hmm. And you can never take it again. But you're going to get a flashback. Yeah. And it's it could be anything. Anytime. Anytime. Mm -hmm. And that's... I, I, I thought about that for years. Like, like LSD was always the really scary drug. Because you could always just flash back. Yeah. <laughs> we have closed the cover on Go Ask Alice. And now it is time to open a brand new chapter we like to call Seen It. Seen It! Our theme for Seen It is Mail Crate. These are movies that were sent to us by our generous viewers. National Treasure. Seen It. Seen It. Delightful. It's a fun little action movie, Indiana Jones ripoff. A good primer for kids who are getting into history to make history more interesting. It's a fun little adventure. The little neat clues they leave glasses mm -hmm. and such yeah. that Ben Franklin invented. And it's a very PG action movie. The, the violence is safe. The good guys never threaten the bad guys. Hmm. They don't have guns. And also the good guys are remarkably good. He cares so much about the Declaration of Independence, but when it appears to be lost... He says, how are my friends? Are they okay? Are they safe? 
I have a movie here, a John Ford film called Sergeant Rutledge. Seen it? Not seen it. Look at that. You see that? Sergeant Rutledge right there, mm -hmm. right? Right? No. This what? is not Sergeant Rutledge. It's not. No. Sergeant Rutledge, the main character, is this tiny figure down here. <laughs> Sergeant Rutledge is played by Woody Strode, who is a uh, black actor of the 40s and 50s and mm -hmm. 60s. He was a John Ford favorite. It's a courtroom drama. It's a Western. I guess this is as close as John Ford would get to a civil rights type movie. It's about a black man who's wrongly accused of something and he was fighting for his... Who's fighting for justice, essentially. We have a movie someone sent us called Strawberry Blonde. Seen it. Seen it. Jimmy Cagney, Olivia de Havilland, uh, Rita Hayworth... And I just watched this movie today, and it is surprisingly fun and romantic. It features uh, the guy who played Wally Fay and Mildred Pierce. He yes. still plays an asshole. Mm -hmm. This was a few <laughs> years before Mildred Pierce, so this is his audition reel for, for playing <laughs> Wally. Uh, Jack Carson. Something happened in this movie that I've never seen before. What? So there's a song that plays throughout the movie. And the band, and the band played, on. played on. There's a motif <clears> running <throat> throughout the whole thing. So at the end of the movie, before the credits, there's a screen that comes up and it says, Hey, moviegoers, before you leave, wait, let's all sing this song together. And then they do a little bouncing ball version of the song. I thought that I'm a, I'm a real crank about things like this, mm -hmm. like sing alongs in theaters. I'm like, no, 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 thank you. But I thought it was delightful. I was watching this by myself here in the basement. It was probably midnight and I sang that damn song. <laughs> I was really grabbed as soon as Olivia de Havilland showed up. She is so funny, and I don't think of her as a funny actress, playing mm -hmm. this free-thinking woman who is not against kissing. And here we have a little Iranian film by Abbas Kiristami called Close Up. Seen it? Yes, yeah, seen it. This is a movie like no other movie ever made. It's about a real-life story. It's about the trial of... Mohsen Makhmalbaf, who was on trial for fraud. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the movie, none of them are actors. They're all the people who were involved with this. The, there's a guy who shows up driving a taxi to pick up this guy. Take, that's the actual taxi driver that was there. <laughs> the court reporters, they're, they're, the, they're the same people. And you look at the credits, it's all himself, himself, herself, mm -hmm. herself, yeah. himself. The guy who commits the fraud... Goes to jail for the fraud. When he gets out, they make this movie, and he plays himself. And in the movie, it's all about him saying, I think I could be famous, and I think I could be a really good actor. It's a documentary that's not a documentary. There's a trip you can take that's always a good trip, and that's when you go to our website, welcometothebasementshow.com. All of our episodes are there. The entire catalog is there for your perusal. And there are also PayPal donation buttons that you can click on to make a one-time or rolling monthly donation to support this show if you like it. We like it. You should, too. You know who else likes it? Martin from Denmark who says, Matt has sometimes praised movies for being free of irony and snark. Could you elaborate a bit more on what you don't like about irony? I am fine with irony, but what is not valued enough, particularly in the last 20 or 30 years, is doing something free of irony, doing something earnestly. Yes. I just think there's too much of it, particularly on the internet, shows like this on the internet, and I just did not want the show, this show to be that type of thing, where I just... I just, I, I, it's just so many shows where it's just like, oh, we're going to watch this stupid movie. And oh my God, isn't it so stupid? I don't want to do that. You know, it's like sincerity. Yeah. It, that's really what I think drives what we do, even though we make funny jokes and we roll our eyes. But... And we make funny jokes about legitimately great movies. I like to think they're funny jokes. You should also check out Unboxing. That's going to come out this coming Friday. That is more Craig and Matt chat and also surprises, packages, who knows? Maybe more stuff from Go Ask Alice, which we had to leave on the cutting room floor. Matt picks it up off the cutting room floor, puts a few back on the cutting room floor, and puts it in to Unboxing. So watch that, and right now, you can watch this. Whoa, I am getting a seizure from looking at Chatner's jacket. That is whacking me out. I feel like his that jacket is narcotics. That's <laughs> he's wearing narcotics. His name is Bud. 